Hello, my name is Lori Cohen and I'm the Executive Director of the Beagle Alliance. Our mission is to rehome animals from testing facilities and advocate for non-animal use in science. Thank you for attending this panel discussion. Thank you to Andrew Fenton for moderating and of course to Animal Justice for continuing to put on such an important event. Last year, 4,000 beagles were released from the now infamous Invigo breeding facility in the United States. Today, I'd like to take a brief look into how and why this release happened. Invigo is a major U.S. animal research breeder and is owned by a Notive, a contract research organization who profits off of dogs, as well as rodents, rabbits, and macaques, all of which are purpose-bred for use in medical testing and other scientific research. Universities, pharmaceutical corporations, and government agencies are all clients of companies like Invigo. The facility in Cumberland, Virginia, which whelped and warehoused beagles before shipping them to buyers, was the second largest of its kind in that country, and it might have stayed that way had it not been for animal rights activists and whistleblowers. It started in 2020 when PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, publicly challenged Virginia Polytechnic and Virginia Tech for purchasing beagles from a local beagle farm factory owned by Invigo. From the PETA site, quote, for years the university has purchased dogs for experiments and training from the mill, and it continues to do so despite the facility's multiple animal welfare violations and disturbing video footage. Dogs suffering in filthy enclosures were recorded by inspectors from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the USDA. In 2021, PETA started an undercover investigation. The investigator involved kept a log while working for Invigo as an animal caretaker for $12 an hour. Puppies were crushed to death in overcrowded enclosures. They fell into open drains and died. Unqualified staff performed medical procedures on beagles, and staff sometimes euthanized dogs without sedation. Federal inspectors visited Invigo on a regular basis, but the PETA investigator found evidence that the staff was hiding what was going on. It should be noted that public and private animal testing laboratories are regulated by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Animal, Plant, Health and Inspection Service, APHIS, which has a public database showing the numbers and species of animals used at a given facility along with inspection reports. The APHIS investigators visited the Virginia and Vigo site routinely. All of the wrongdoing found and reported by the inspectors never led to Invigo being fined, prosecuted, or punished in any way for breaking the law, proving that laws that aren't enforced are useless. PETA took its findings to the U.S. Department of Agriculture and demanded action, prompting a series of federal government inspections. In April of 2022, the legislation known as the Beagle Bills were approved by the Virginia General Assembly and signed into law. The Beagle Bills are intended to protect animals that are bred and sold for experimental purposes. Republican Senator Bill Stanley and Democratic Senator Jennifer Boisco teamed up and worked together to introduce the bills and get them passed in direct response to their concerns about the Invigo breeding facility. In fact, Senator Stanley visited Invigo several times and went on to adopt two beagles named Dixie and Daisy. He is quoted as saying, if a member of our community harms a dog, treats them cruelly, they can be charged with felony cruelty to animals, but inside that facility, they were not. If there are serious violations from the USDA, that would act like a kill switch and stop their business, and they would have to fold up shop and go somewhere else. We're not going to allow companies to come into Virginia and breed these dogs and then abuse them and discard them like they're pieces of trash, said Senator Stanley. Senator Boisco said that Senate Bill 87 makes it very clear that it bans the selling of research anim animals in a facility um, if they have received citations under, under the Federal Animal Welfare Act, and that was the linchpin for Invigo. She also said, I think that a lot of people care. When we work together, we can really make big things happen. 
Senate Bill 90 was also a key part of the legislation as it relates to Invigo. It says that any breeder or animal testing facility that no longer has need for a dog or cat in its possession must offer to release that animal for adoption. Senator Stanley said that one bill that demands adoption if they can't be sold is the impetus of the federal court now mandating Invigo is shut down. They can't sell dogs, and under the Virginia law, they now must adopt out 4,000 beagles currently in their possession. At this point, the Virginia General Assembly got some momentum, and the federal government took notice. Letters across all parties were sent, and another investigation yielded more serious violations, which resulted in a court order that said Invigo must stop. The Invigo Beagle rescue timelines are as follows. In May of 2022, law enforcement showed up at the Cumberland facility with a search warrant. Records and computers were seized, and more than 100 dogs were determined to be in acute distress. The Department of Justice filed a complaint against Invigo for repeat violations of the Animal Welfare Act. In June of 2022, 29 legislators across parties signed a letter to the USDA urging an emergency suspension of Invigo's license to operate, and a temporary restraining order was issued stating that Invigo immediately ceased breeding and selling beagles at the Cumberland facility. Invigo went ahead and tried to sell more than 2,000 of those beagles, but a judge ruled against them. In July of 2022, the Department of Justice and Invigo released a transfer plan for the beagles, and in September of 2022, with the help of the Humane Society of the United States, the HSUS, and their rescue partners, along with many rescues, fosters, and adopters from across the U.S., and, he, and who we know personally in Canada, 4,000 beagles destined to live in confinement had been released and placed with individuals and organizations. The Beagle Alliance and our rescue partner, Cage to Couch, were honored to find homes for several dozen of these beagles, and some are here in Canada and are pictured behind me. Our friend John Raymer from Kindness Ranch, who was instrumental in this rescue, adopted the very first beagle and named him Uno. Now, it's clear that the system in place did not work until the people came together to insist that something change and that current laws be enforced and that there was accountability. Did this happen because the United States as a nation views animals differently than we do in Canada? Legally, it appears so. Ethically and morally, it is unlikely. We know that the Republicans and the Democrats do not share similar belief systems, but people with different politics and different interests entirely came together, and the legislation backed them up, and the government enforced the law. It happened because the people who became aware of what was happening to these beagles set aside any differences and began to work together to strengthen and enforce legislation and to execute a plan that made the difference for these 4,000 who then went on to change people's lives and inadvertently spread awareness about animal testing in an unprecedented way. The only similar situation we had in Canada was the undercover investigation by Last Chance for Animals, a Los Angeles-based animal rights organization who in 2016 went undercover at ITR laboratories in Quebec to find this. Animals being thrown slam suspended by their ears or limbs. Open wounds and swollen infections left untreated. Macaques being denied access to sufficient drinking water. And beagles unable to turn around because they were constantly tethered. After that investigation, the City Council amended zoning bylaws to prevent new animal testing facilities from opening in that municipality. From the Last Chance for Animals website, Last Chance for Animals commends the City Council on this forward-thinking decision that will spare so many animals a life of misery and suffering. However, there is still work to be done because ITR Laboratories continues to operate under a grandfather clause. Each day at ITR, animals are still abused, tortured, and killed under the guise of scientific research. That was in 2017. Currently on the ITR website, ITR Laboratories has been CCAC, Canadian Council on Animal Care, and AAA, LAC Association for Assessment and Accreditation for Laboratory Animal Care, accredited since 1993. 
and studies conducted are fully compliant with the good laboratory practice, the GLP. No shutdown, and certainly no beagles released. As of this date, the Beagle Alliance has placed 52 dogs into foster and adopter homes. 31 of those were from laboratory testing. Those 31 beagles were from facilities in the United States. We have reached out to both public and private facilities in Canada, including ITR, with little to no response. None of these laboratories are required by law in Canada to release animals after study. Legislation and transparency were key to the success of the release of the Invigo Beagles. This is what allowed for PETA to know where to start an investigation, and this is how the findings eventually allowed for enforcement. But prior to PETA's investigation, the U.S. regulatory bodies failed these beagles. However, when advocates, citizens, and government officials came together, the law supported their findings, and the enforcement began. In Canada, the CCAC, our regulatory body, is voluntary, and private facilities who have their own funding need not ever report. There is no transparency. Even if our entire country jumped up and down in front of ITR laboratories, there would be no federal law for us to safely land on, and the treatment of animals and science continues to fall short of what is normally required under Canadian anti-cruelty laws. Yes, in 2023 we have made ground. But there is still no federal legislation in Canada to protect animals in science, and the only province to mention research animals is the Animals for Research Act in Ontario. Most provinces have a long list of exemptions that allow for little protection, and many animals that could go on to live after study are euthanized. Let me add that this is most certainly not a criticism of the CCAC who are working to oversee the use of animals in science, it is the responsibility of our legislators to be transparent and to be accountable to Canadians. It's about making this a priority in our country. How do we make this a priority? As advocates, it is our job to go out into the world and be a voice for the animals. And we need to speak to as many people as will listen. Because in this country, the majority still creates government. And it is their job through law to reflect our values. What did Senator Boisco say? When we work together, we can really make big things happen. My Conservative MP said that his party will not touch animal issues because the constituents do not believe that animals should have the same rights as humans. It's a belief system. Does it mean he hates animals? No. He was showing me photos of his dogs while we were chatting. Let me share that almost every one of our fosters and adopters are not vegan, but they love their animals. In fact, if it weren't for their love, we as a foster-based rescue could not save lives. It's a belief system. And I think personally, locally, and globally, history proves that nothing good comes by attempting to shame people into a new belief system. We are human. We are messy. We are contradictory. And we are complex. We have all harmed animals. We have all eaten meat. We have all been at some point vaccinated. We live in areas where land has been cleared and where over-the-counter medication is a daily choice. All of our food choices require the taking of something from an animal. So what does it take? Awareness, communication, community, majority, legislation, and law. Who then makes these changes? Government officials, legislators, advocates, media. But first, us. It starts with us. We represent the animals, and the lawmakers represent us. The senator said, We saw big things happen when people came together. We know that not everyone that came together for the sake of the Invigo Beagle shared the same belief system. But they didn't focus on their differences. They focused on what they could do together. The dogs you see behind me were only released because of a series of moving parts, all that included people working together. I may never understand how a scientist or laboratory worker keeps a beagle in a cage and then euthanizes him or her after study, but I do know former laboratory workers 
and I know that they went into their field to care for animals and that the scientists went to school to help humanity. It's a belief system. These are not intrinsically evil people. Those are the minority. These are not fanatics. These are people trying to do good within their belief system. So what then if we simply met people exactly where they are? Could we gain the majority? It would be great if we could spend our lives hanging out with people who shared our beliefs where we felt heard and valued. But that's not how we make change. How we make change is by being inclusive and offering as many people as possible an opportunity to choose differently. We simply cannot afford to dismiss people. The cost is far too high. And if it, it is one thing that I learned while working in corrections, it is that I am most certainly not the judge and jury. Can you imagine in this country if the Liberals and Conservative parties came together on animal welfare issues? These parties and all parties are supposed to reflect the values of us, the majority. We in this room, we need to go out and get the majority without judging and without shaming. If we want to be heard, we need to listen. What if instead of posting on social media about how evil these scientists are, we say thank you for caring for the humans. Now how do we care for the animals? What if instead of posting on social media about how non-vegans hate animals, we offered up amazing and nutritious recipes for everyone to try? We call ourselves compassionate. That word gets thrown around in animal welfare all day long. What if we took our love and compassion for the animals and extended it to the people who have different beliefs than us? What if we stop focusing on what we think others should do and instead ask them what they can do for the animals right now? As a rescue, it is imperative that we work with the laboratories to ensure that these dogs are given a second chance. It is imperative that we work with other rescues, volunteers, fosters, and adopters all of which we may not always agree with on everything except the thing that matters and that is what they can do for the animals in their care right now at this moment because it truly does take a village. It took a village to release and rehome 4,000 beagles. Canada and the world has seen enough divisiveness in the last several years to last a lifetime. The U.S. is most certainly not an example of perfection here. But when it came to this one moment in time, they came together and 4,000 dogs were saved. And you can bet a few humans were saved along the way too. If we do not meet people where they are, we will spin our wheels and the people and the political parties in this country will never meet or agree on animal welfare issues. But if we can focus on what people can do instead of what they are not doing, we as a majority will make more of an impact for animals in our society and within our community and within our government. Laws will change and animals will be saved. The dogs pictured behind me did not open the cages by themselves. The animals currently in laboratories across Canada aren't going to open the cages themselves either. They aren't going to decide it's time to leave and rally the troops. Their lives literally depend on us humans to set aside our differences, to leave our judgments and our intolerances at the cage doors and come together to open those cage doors until we make this stop entirely. And maybe along the way, these beagles who so readily forgive the very species who have harmed them, and I've seen it a hundred times, maybe they will teach us how to have more compassion for each other. Thank you.